outskirts of Kabul is home to hundreds of families displaced by the war. Fardeen used to come here to entertain the children, but since the start of the pandemic, he's... We will be hardening the East Precinct facility by boarding up the exterior windows, having the Seattle Fire Department evaluate the fire suppression systems and applying fire retardants to the building exterior and installing fencing. This is an exercise in trust and de-escalation. We have heard from the protesters, many on social media and many elected officials that the intention is to march and the buildings on the block will be safe. Chief Scoggins is directing the fire department to assess and protect the residential buildings on the block. We will not allow violent actors to destroy a city facility. I'm really calling right now on all of our public friends and community members and community leaders and elected officials to help us ensure and manage the, the people who are attending so that we don't damage the precinct. A specific deployment plan will ensure that safety and our ability to respond to 911 calls are handled while protecting our building, our neighbors, our vehicles, and our officers. The Chief Scoggins will be present that we fire people around because the East Precinct was built in 1938 uh, on wood timbers that is old. It is highly, it could be easily damaged, so we want to make sure that we're taking all safety precautions for the facility. But we also want to make sure that we allow people to express their First Amendment free speech while protecting that facility and having officers available. So we just wanted to let people know that the deployment and the footprint will be different this evening. We're really hoping for safety and security for everyone involved, and we're taking a different posture to make sure that we've handled it. I want to thank my command staff who work with me diligently about the deployment plan, some of whom are not here, uh, but we're looking forward to a safe night in the city of Seattle. That's our goal. I'll take any questions if there are any. Chief Bess, can you explain why the decision Well, uh, the, the rule about the tear gas was that we felt that there was a life is safety issue that we could deploy the tear gas, the CS gas. And based on what we were experiencing, we thought there was a life safety issue, particularly because of the rocks and bottles that were being deployed, the lasers that we were pointing in the officers' uh, eyes. We had already had a shooting earlier in the evening, and there was a person running around with a gun in the area. So all of that uh, combined uh, presented a life safety issue, and that's why CS uh, was deployed. That is the last thing we want to do, uh, and we're going to try to make sure that tonight we don't, uh, the situation doesn't devolve to the point that we need to use any sort of uh, chemical irritant. So please clarify, is there a ban on, on CS, on the tear gas in the city right now? Is it, is it being used? Well, what we had was we had 30 days, um, and the only people that allowed the department to utilize it under a life safety circumstance was our SWAT team. And, um, no officers have it. We removed it from everybody. We only gave it to our trained SWAT team to use. And we made it very clear from the onset that we didn't want to use it at all. But if it was deployed, life safety and only by our trained SWAT members. And last night, situations dictated that um, it was necessary. And we're very hopeful that that doesn't happen tonight. And we are doing everything we can to reduce our footprint, our deployment. We don't want to be the center of the story. We really want people to exercise uh, the freedom of speech. And if opening up the street will allow that to happen peacefully, we're willing to do take those measures. So that's where we are. Chief Best, you also mentioned that some of the officers will be getting rid of some of their protective equipment when engaging the protesters. Could you be specific and tell us exactly what they're going to be getting rid of? Well, um, that was from yesterday when we reduced our footprint uh, because we felt that uh, many people did not want the officers to be in protective gear. So we removed many of the folks out of their line of sight um, and out of the way so that um, hopefully we could have had a better day. Um, that didn't seem to do uh, the job that we were hoping that it was going to do. So um, today we've taken a different tactic to make sure that we can, again, keep people safe, that they can protest um, and not uh, be inhibited by any of our actions. I would love to. I don't have any more detail on it, but I'm happy to look that up and talk to you. I have very little information at this point about the tactics that we used at that at that time. The National Guard is still available to us, but we won't have them on front and center. 
uh, they will be able to deploy if needed. Again, we're trying to reduce anything that's going to um, cause anybody to you know, feel like we're impeding their ability to express their First Amendment free speech. But we also have to make sure we have people available in case our facilities come under attack. Can you just talk about the East Precinct? Are they, are they removing items? Are they evacuating from that? Is that what you said? And, and is that the goal to do that tonight and then remove the barricades around that tonight? Well, we're going to, you know, every day we're doing, every day we're looking at um, what our planning is going to be. So I can tell you that for tonight we are going to remove anything that we consider to be sensitive from the precinct area. This is the first time uh, that we have uh, tried to protect our facility in this fashion. So we want to make sure that we have all the precautions that we can to make sure that we protect both the facility but allow people to exercise the First Amendment free speech and march around the precinct if that's what they choose to do. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. We're trying our best to make sure that we're facilitating uh, every option to keep peace in the city. And we have said, and I will continue to say, we will meet peace with peace. And that's our, that's our guiding principle. So that's my last um, answer. I thank you very much for coming out here. Very definitely appreciate it. Thank you. All right, just in case you are joining us right now, you just heard a press conference from uh, Seattle Police Chief Carmen Best, and she kind of gave us an update on the posture, Seattle Police posture in terms of the East Precinct tonight. Uh, this has changed throughout the past few nights. Of course, 11th and, and Pike is where the, the hotbed of uh, the protests have been. Uh, she said that they are not abandoning the East Precinct. Instead, they will be boarding up windows. Seattle Fire will be going through the building as well, checking on the fire suppression system. She also mentioned that they will be removing uh, anything sensitive in the building as well. But Aliana, certainly uh, this is a different posture than what we've seen over the past few nights. Yeah, it certainly is. And you heard Chief Best um, just echo the same sentiment she's been saying over the last several days. We want to meet peace with peace. They really want to avoid um, any violence whatsoever. They want to remove their footprint, um, police footprint, and as, as well as the National Guard while keeping everybody on standby in case their East Precinct does come under attack. The East Precinct built in 1938. So, of course, there are a number of sensitive documents. There are a number of case files in there that they need to try to make sure that they secure while also maintaining safety and doing what they can to not intimidate the people who are exercising their amendment to, uh, you know, as their right of freedom of speech. We want to get right to Q13, Simone Del Rosario, live with this breaking development. She's been out there tonight um, with more on this. Simone. Alian and Brian, what the police chief did not say directly, but what multiple law enforcement sources have confirmed to our Brandy Cruz is that Seattle police is in fact preparing for the possibility that they will not be able to defend the East Precinct here right behind me. And as we are on scene, we are seeing a lot of those preparations firsthand. Let me step out of the way here. Obviously, we have huge barriers at this end on 13th and Pine, so two blocks away from where those protests take place as well. But as we've been here on scene, we've been watching how they are fortifying the East Precinct tonight. So they're boarding up those windows. We know that we've been also seeing uh, fencing go on on the outside. And you see different types of barriers surrounding the East Precinct right now. We have concrete barriers and then we have those orange traffic barriers as well. So as uh, the chief did mention, they are removing sensitive materials outside of the precinct in that preparation so they want to make sure that obviously there's not going to be any ammunition in there any sensitive case files in there there's a lot to do to prepare for this possibility but we also heard the chief call on community leaders to try to bring a sense of calm out here and to try to avoid the worst from happening tonight but a lot of preparations happening on the ground right now as they prepare for this possibility we know that 11th and pine has become Quite a bit of a flashpoint here on Capitol Hill as we see night after night the protesters facing off with police. And so we are continuing to cover this news right now again. New tonight, law enforcement sources confirming to our Brandy Cruz that they are preparing for the possibility. But obviously, as you hear from the chief, fortifying this building tonight, hoping that it doesn't come to that. We'll have much more coming up. For now, live in Seattle, back to you. All right, Simone, thank you for that live report. Well, the decision by SPD follows a day spent on edge after another night of police clashes outside the precinct. Q13's Frankie Thompson is live with that part of our coverage today. Frankie. 
Yes, Eliana, we are at 11th and Pine, this street leading to protesters. As you can see, they are right outside of the East Precinct. Now, this is the same street where a man drove through here yesterday as so many people tried to stop him before entering the crowd. He ended up shooting somebody. People today are wondering why there is no road close sign here. New fences are added at 13th and Pine as day 11 of protests unfold outside of Seattle's East Precinct. Right. But people in the fight against police brutality say the fences only add to the division. They need to stand with the people instead of barricading and standing against them. Seattle Department of Transportation blocked these streets and says additional closures could happen as this continues to be a fluid situation. Excuse me, I live here. Can you please let me through? Yep, sure. Come on through, man. Let's get the here. people who live and work near Ground Zero of the protest say it's hard to get around these barricades. The general manager of Ramen Dambo says not only are people struggling to find their way to the restaurant, they're also scared. Yeah, you know, nobody wants to uh, come here to pick up the food. Yeah. So this is a reason why we are struggling uh, to continue the business uh, last few days. As the days and nights of protesting continue, Peaceful demonstrators say they hope the things that are dividing them and police will be resolved. We just need to stay strong, take back the powers. The people remind us, you know, the United States all together that, you know, it's people, you know, it's the people all together. Stand together, come to a solution together, you know. So we can see right now the protest is peaceful and a lot of people say they're going to work hard tonight to make sure it stays that way, just like Chief Best says, meet peace with peace, and that's what they're trying to do here tonight. But SDOT is monitoring the situation as well, and they say they will continue closing off roads as necessary right now. They are just going to keep that map that we showed you. Those roads are going to be closed, and they'll monitor as time goes on. For now, we're reporting live in downtown Seattle. Frankie Thompson, Q13 News. Frankie, thank you so much for that report as well. Well, the growing clashes between police and protesters ignited a contentious meeting by the Seattle City Council. And the biggest issue here, Aliana, are the cries to defund the Seattle police by as much as 50 percent. Q13 Steve Kiggins live now with that part of our team coverage. Steve. Yeah, Brian and Aliana, we're not just talking about the budget here. City Council member Shama Sawan says she's also creating legislation that would ban chemical agents and keep officers from using chokeholds against subjects. Meanwhile, the Seattle Police Union president warns that cutting the budget could have a big impact on crime. Protesters are throwing back. For yet another night, conflicts between protesters and Seattle police in Capitol Hill boil over, sending smoke through the streets and spurring condemnation by Seattle City Council. There was no provocation. Seattle police insist they only respond with force after protesters toss bottles, bricks, and other materials. But Council Member Shama Suwan says she was on the front lines last night and says the public is in far greater danger. There were donned in top to bottom riot gear and they were faced with ordinary people with nothing other than some of them having, um, you know, homemade face shields. Seattle's police union says dozens of their officers have been injured during confrontations. This morning, Seattle Council Member Teresa Mosqueda promised not to pass the mayor's budget and plan to make drastic cuts to the force. And I am committed to defunding the police, to using most of that money, 50%, ideally, to invest back into communities that we failed. Good night, right here at 11th and Pine is unacceptable. But Seattle Police killed President Mike Solon says Cutting SPD's budget now threatens the safety of both officers and the public. We don't need priority on the phone. Public safety crimes are rising. If you remove a significant amount of money in the police department, there's going to be an explosion of crime. But other council members are convinced years of reforming SPD has failed, and drastic action is needed now. It's just not a healthy tree. We need to plant a new tree. And if the President Gonzalez said, we have to completely reimagine, revision what community policing is. I think, oh my God. So we reached out last week. Uh, well, last week, Mayor Durkin said she would not support a 50% cut in the budget to SPD. We also reached out to Carmen Best, asking both of those officials for comments from this morning's council briefing. We've not heard back. Steve Kagan's Q13 News. All right, Steve, thank you so much. Governor Inslee just wrapped up a news conference on the statewide demonstrations. Yeah, the governor is reinforcing his support for peaceful protests all across the state and says policing needs to change.
And I know that we have to rethink policing and public safety in Washington State. And we've got to make sure that those discussions are not in a vacuum. To that end, I will be convening a diverse group of black leaders and representatives of other marginalized communities, as well as representatives of law enforcement, to develop proposals to submit to the legislature. Now, the governor then named three legislative action items he wants put in place. One of them is creating an independent investigation and prosecution unit for officer-involved killings that is separate from law enforcement. Also, rethink police use of force, including chokeholds, and create legally binding and enforceable obligations that, that officers report misconduct by fellow officers.